Hello everyone. Welcome to Learning Techniques and uh, this is your host Heman Gangwar. And so we are going to install Foreman and configure it for the usage. Foreman, those who are not aware, this is a tool by which we can, uh, it provides a very good uh, strong point of view for provisioning bare metal machines, providing a configuration management and also for monitoring and reporting purpose. It can be integrated with a lot of configuration management tools like Ansible, Puppet, Chef with its API. Um, here we are going to integrate it with Puppet. So if you're not comfortable with Puppet, you can um, see our previous video or blogs on it, how to install it. Still, we're going to install the Puppet here. So let's start with our first task of installing Puppet. For this, I have written a playbook inside my GitHub repository. You can see our puppet setup. The steps are very clear, so you can easily follow the README and follow the usage steps. The commands work like charm, so that won't cause an issue. Okay, we are including our repository puppet setup. Now in the repository, I have already created a inventory file as per my requirement. It contains my post where this will be acting as my puppet and the form and master while the rest of the nodes will be acting as the clients. All this setup is being done on CentOS 7 machines. Okay, now proceed to the second step that we already done. We have updated the inventory with the uh, correct node names. Okay, uh, with the, uh, the step written here, uh, let me show exactly what's going to say. This is your variable files. So here you, we are using two things. First thing, exactly the puppet repo to install the relevant puppet packages. And second is the node, which we are going to use as the master. So if you're using some other node, just update its name over here. Okay, so now rest remaining is just execution of playbook. Uh, before that, let's first verify whether all our hosts are accessible to us or not. So I'm sorry, I will oh. it's a simple ping module and should show the answer. Okay, so the good thing is all the nodes are connecting fine. So let's uh, run the playbook to set up the puppet. It's a simple playbook. First, it's gathering all the facts. Now it's including the variables, it's required variables over here. Now it's configuring the EPEL repository for some extra packages which are required during the installation. Okay, um, once the package is installed, um, it's proceeding with the master setup. So uh, we do not need the puppet server package on the client node. So it's keeping all the nodes and proceeding with the master node for the relevant packages. Now, once the puppet server package is installed on the master node, it's proceeding with the client nodes to install the other puppet packages. So it will skip the master over here and uh, install the packages on the list of the nodes, all these four nodes. Once the relevant packages are installed, it's allowing port 8140 and uh, the firewall so that the communication is smoother. Then after that, on the master server, it has updated the sysconfig puppet server file with the exact memory requirements which are required. This is not required on the client one, so that's fine. Now it's just deploying a basic puppet configuration file. So it's a simple file. You can check it once it's deployed. Now it's verifying whether we have any created any CA authority. So it's already there. The master is itself acting as a CA authority. So it is skipping it. Now the playbook proceeded quickly. So let's see exactly what's doing now. Then it's basically checking the status of the certificates. As the as you know, the puppet works on. So it's SSLB certificates. So uh, 
client used to send the certificate for master to sign that. Okay, we can get forward. So that's all the story how then the master signed the certificate and then the story go ahead. So the public server started clients are providing their certificates. So the thing is we have not configured auto sign is equals to true in the master. That's why the client commands are uh, waiting for the master to confirm that the certificates are signed and thus showing those errors. But uh, don't worry, it worked fine. Uh, so if you want to check, you can have this playbook again without any issues. Just pretty idempotent. It won't change anything on the server end. So the next one should be clean. And if it's not clean, we have to look exactly why it's happening. Okay, that's clean now. So all things are good. So in order to check whether um, my notes are working fine, let's uh, do a puppet run. We can see the puppet run is working fine. So, so now, uh, the puppet installation is fine, so let's move to the master bar and uh, configure the form in for us. Install and configure the form. So, if you need more assistance in form in, you can uh, refer to this form in dot org site. Sorry, org, it's org site is there. The complete documentation is there. How you can install the form in, and the other details about the form in and how you install on the other distros. So you can refer that as well. Okay, I'm closing it as of now. So, so um, let's install the form. There's simple basic steps. Um, first, in, install the Postgre database for it. So let's configure the Postgre DB for it. So we have, uh, Using this repository, you can uh, find the links to those repositories in our blog. So that's not a thing to worry. Just one thing, all these repositories are using internet to make its connection. So in CentOS, by default, you get a lot of repositories configured that allows you to go to internet. But if you are in other distros like Red Hat, you might have to allow the internet on the machine and uh, configure some other repositories like OS and the other ones. And once the PostgreSQL are done, uh, now we are left with uh, configuring the repositories that will provide us the form and packages. And and some extra packages for EPEM if it's already not there. So that we won't face any issues while configuring it. Okay, that's done. Uh, now regarding the installation, it basically uses a utility called Form and Hyphen Installer. So we have to install this package separately as well so that the utility will, will be installed in our system. It's a simple binary. so. Those who are comfortable with Linux environment, they know how what the binary is and how it works. Okay, now this binary is installed, so we have to give a form and installer command. Even if you want to give these options, it will configure and install the form in for you, but with the, the default credentials and random credentials. Here I'm using it so that uh, I'll have my 
predefined credentials over here. This script may take some time, depending on what components going to configure. So, this is a solid script. Uh, if anyone has installed uh, Satellite Six on Linux, um, they must have encountered such script like a satellite installer or something. It's a complete script that we could perform a unattended installation. Still, if you want to configure some other parameters, this script provides a lot of options, so we can use those. Install it as per our requirement. I'll install and configuring different components. The script may take up to 20 or 25 minutes as well. So don't get panic. Patience is the key here. You can configure the Apache, the passenger, the rack, and in some cases, the redis as well. configuring the proxy component. TFTP for providing a PX installation if required. So now it's installed. So once it's installed successfully, you will get a message like this. You can also check the logs over here. So I'm checking what is solution log it has configured. So you can see it's um, using different settings. It's Kafu. I thought it's Catello, which I put in satellite. So you can read those logs. So even in case of errors as well, that would help you to troubleshoot. Okay, by default, it's uh, opening the ports, H443 for the proxy and the 443 for the normal WebGUI. So, you can also check that we can figure. Yes, it is using a passenger rack for its configuration, the Redis server for the caching stuff. Not the Java base up. That is not uh, forming this puppet basically, puppet server. Here you can see it has opened the port 80 and the port 443 for its operations. So quickly, um, let's white ports. Okay, let's, let's open all the three ports. Okay, sorry, my bad. That will be 80 slash TCP. Okay, that's done. Then let's open HTTPS and uh, also open 8043. Now reload it. 
about it. Let's verify whether the required ports are open or not. Okay, the required ports are already open in the firewall, so it's fine. Uh, the thing I have also mentioned in my blog that you may need to configure your PC warren path in the puppet.conf, which Foreman has taken over. Puppet Labs code. So you have to update your module path as well over here if you want to use your default puppet modules or your custom puppet modules which you have written in your environment. Uh, the details I have provided in the blog so you can refer that. Um, um, wait, let's not face the time and uh, Open this and see exactly how's the look and the feel. Since my DNS is working, so it won't be a big cost for me except the cell sign certificate. Hopefully, it won't give any errors. Okay, the formal is uh, this is the login page, so I'll provide the credentials. Which I have uh, created just before. Okay, it accepted the credential. It, is, uh, it has landed me on the dashboard page. Here you can check uh, the dashboard details exactly, uh, the checks for the puppet runs, etc. You can also see exactly how many hosts are currently reporting to it. Um, let's report some more hosts. So. Okay, so we have con completed the puppet run. Let's see if it's reflected in our dashboard now. Okay, so you can see this is working now. So similarly, we can, uh, as many puppet runs are completed, those nodes will be put a sign over here. To see more details about a node, just click it over here. Here you can see the, all the details about the node, how many successful run it has done, and the other details about the node itself, which OS is using, what is the communicating MAC details and the IP configured with it. Here you can also see the other facts in the YAML format. So that's also fine. You can see the puppet reports, exactly what puppet reports has ran in last five hours and what errors they have got. So this is the first run. So we have received exactly what message Returned in the run. You can also import your classes, existing classes, existing modules. Um, I won't show over here, but uh, I have added that in the blog, so you can um, refer that as well. So that's all from my end. The formula. I would suggest configure it, test it, explore it, and uh, bombard my blog with the uh, questions. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for the time.